when doing a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm asking you to solve, right? That's what it says, solve. Just like when you guys had your work today, or on your homework last night, we was, you had a function and we had to set it equal to zero. These, when we're gonna solve, we have to make sure we're setting it equal to zero. Unless it's a linear equation and we can go ahead and just solve for our variable, if we have a quadratic, we want to set it equal to zero so we can apply our factory technique. So what I'll do is I'll subtract 6y on both sides, so therefore I get 9y squared plus 12y minus 12 equals zero. Okay? Now, I'll go through this technique and I'm going to go over the long way. There are shorter ways to do it. But if you don't understand, if you have trouble with doing this technique, here's just a foolproof method you guys can always use. Again, when we have a quadratic in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where we have a value of a that other than 1, we do a times c up top and then b on the bottom. You say, what two numbers multiply to give me a times c and then add to give me b on the bottom. So I do 8 times C, 9 times 12. So you can just take a look and say, all right, 9 times negative 12, actually. So you do 8, 10, 1, 9, 10. So that's 108. And then our B is going to be at positive 12. Now, if you don't know what two numbers add to multiply to give you 108 and add to give you 12, then do a factor tree. Right? Either factor tree or just start factoring. You know, what two numbers multiply to give you 108? Just start listing all the factors. All right? You can go divided by 2, divided by 3, divided by 4, divided by 5. I know it takes a lot of work sometimes, but that's some things you have to go through. Yes? Isn't it negative 108? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. I, I forgot to. I talked about it, but I didn't put it up there. Yes, it is a negative 8 because that's a negative 12. So it's what two numbers multiply to give negative 8, which is very important because you know that one of your factors has to be negative, right? And when we look at this, we figure out that it was going to be um, positive 18 and negative 6. Yes? All right. So now once you determine those two values, what we do is we split our middle term. So we say 9y squared plus 18y minus 6y minus 12 equals 0. All right. From this step to this step, I want you guys to notice the value of my quadratic equation has not changed. The only thing I did is I broke apart these two numbers. Let me give it to you guys this way. Let me think, let me think about this. If I say 5 equals 5, you guys understand that's true, right? Yes? Can I break apart the number 5? Can I say this? 4 plus 1 equals 5? Are these equivalent equations? Yes, the only difference is I split up 4 and 1. That's it. All I'm doing is I'm splitting up my middle term. But what's nice about splitting up this middle term is now I can do grouping. So when I apply grouping, now I say what does the GCF of each one of these terms? So what is the GCF of 9y squared plus 18y? It's going to be a 9y, right? When I factor out a 9y, I'm left with y plus 2, and then I say what can I factor out of negative 6y minus 12, and I can say I can factor out a negative 6. Then, now you see, all right, my y plus 2 and my y plus 2, I can factor that out, and when I factor that out, I'm left with 9y minus 6 equals 0. Now I can apply the zero product property. I'm not going to go through the steps. Y equals negative 2. Add 6, divide by, add 6, divide by 9, so, and then divide by 3, so it's going to be 2, uh, 2 thirds. Okay? Anybody have any questions on the process? This is the longer process. There is another quicker method, but you need to pretty much master this before we can really start going on to the quicker stuff. And really what's difficult about this, guys, is taking 108, and determining what numbers multiply to give you 108, but then add to give you 12. But besides that, it's just following these steps, all right? Um, the next thing I want